<laughs> that's actually the but I'm like you know head banging and hitting loud are absolutely two different things. Yeah. What I find find myself doing is uh, like you. This is like you start with head banging a lot, but playing really relaxed just to warm up, and then one goes down, the other one goes up. You start head banging less, but you are more confident with putting more yeah. effort. And it's hard also to hit very hard when you are head banging because your balance, your body balance yeah. is not so great, and you don't really watch where you are <laughs> hitting and. Sometimes you're well. I don't know if it happens to you, but the stick gets stuck in my hair. And I remember oh, oh, sometimes yeah, it was like I'm oh, here. My, my stick is here. I make yeah, the hit yeah. and I make the end bang at the same time. Woo. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I, I, when when my stick got stuck in my hair and then I just like missed a couple, of things, <laughs> and I was trying to pull it out from my hair. It's like not a pleasant thing. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have that problem. Yeah. Maybe Martin used to. Not anymore. Yeah, yeah. 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 And that's why I cut my hair. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we have to um, start with the last question. It's time because we're running late. So last question from Marcus. I'm really interested in the way how you develop your creativity, like the 50 shades of blast beat video, how a typical drum recording workday is structured and which goals in drumming motivate you. So uh, yeah. Well, thank you for this question because um, this is uh, not a technical related question, stuff like this. So it's a bit nice to have that kind of question too. About creativity, it's more, let's be honest, you never um, make something 100% new. Uh, it's always, you always have someone that knows not a lot about drumming or music in general and say, this was absolutely new, this is the first guy to do this. Well, in fact, not. He, this is just a combination of different things that he put together. And when I try to find different things, uh, some special idea, this is mainly that I have uh, this idea that was uh, already made by a drummer and this idea by another drummer, this idea by another drummer. And let's put all of this together and see if I can uh, make something a bit new with all of that, but it's never going to be 100% new. For example, like the breathing drum technique with the pipe where I blow inside mm -hmm. the snare drum. This is something that was made by Gavin Harrison on a drum solo, uh, David Letterman. And this is already something he um, uh, uh, watched on some jazz uh, uh, drummer. So this is not new. What was new at that time is to put this technique during a song, during a blast beat, that was new, but otherwise it was not new. Blast beat are not new. This uh, drum technique with the pipe is not new, but everything put together was new. And um, with the, f uh, the 50 shades of blast beat video, it's basically all the time uh, this kind of stuff. It's like I heard um, a long time ago, uh, MySpace was still running well. Oh, <laughs> <long time ago. laughs> I heard a Rebirth of the Nemesis by uh, Melikesh and I was like, oh, terms during a blast beat, That's, this is nice, I want to do that later. And then I remember some snare accents, uh, not on a blast beat, but it was Virgil Donati on a drum solo and I was like, this is nice, I can use this during a blast beat. And then I've watched George Corias doing hi-hat accent during a blast beat and I was like, but maybe I can make uh, tom accents, snare accents, hi-hat open close during a blast beat and I, then I can play a beat inside the blast beat. And then what kind of different uh, beats I can put inside a blast beat. And this is basically 50 shades uh, of blast beat. It's always like, okay, this pattern and this pattern and this pattern that I can play as a groove. Let's just, I'm going to replace the bass drum by the floor tom and I'm going to play like this basic groove during a blast beat. Most of the time it is stuff like this. And then I thought about why do we always use the snare drum during a blast beat? So let's move my left hand from the snare drum to a tom. Uh, let's play a blast beat with only toms, for example, also, and it's going to be kind of a treble blast beat. I will still have like the, the basic stuff of the blast beat, which is a, a, a single stroke roll between a, a foot and a hand. I will still keep this at the basic uh, uh, core of the blast beat, but then I'm going just to move around the drum kit only on the rack terms and for all term, and this is going to be something a little bit more treble. And uh, yeah, this is, you, you see always taking different ideas and put them together to have something kind of new, but it's never something 100% new, never, never, never. 
And uh, yeah, then about the kicks, I, I was like, double strokes, this is nice, maybe I can use this to put some rhythm on the bass drum. And why uh, double strokes are going to be better than single stroke in that case? Well, because then, with each of my foot, I can control two pedals, so I can basically control the hi-hat during the blast beat, even if I'm doing rhythm. Uh, so yeah, uh, then you know, on the, on the left kick, you play doubles, and then you can play stuff like, uh, instead of having this on the kick you have and at the same time that you do the you have your uh, left foot on the hi-hat pedals and so it's open it's opening and closing the hi-hat and you can mean you can make accent with that and yeah again you combine everything together and you make different uh, blast beats